Hey guys, I'm Mike Capra with Black Hills UTV, and today we're going to be showing you the Rhino USA Ultimate Survival Shovel. Things don't always go as planned when off-roading, so it's always nice to be prepared for any situation. The Rhino USA Ultimate Survival Shovel comes in a heavy-duty carry bag in four pieces and is easily assembled. The Rhino USA Ultimate Survival Shovel has a ton of features that can help you get out of a bind if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Each extension bar comes with hidden tools for every emergency situation. In the handle, it has a saw, a whistle, and a fire starter. The end can double as a glass breaker. Also has a bottle opener, saw on the edge here, nice spade, and can also double as a pickaxe. This shovel is super stout and comes with two non-slip rubberized grips to ensure a secure hold. The Rana USA Ultimate Survival Shovel extends from 7 inches to 31 inches once it's assembled. This is a standard piece of equipment that should be in every off-road vehicle that you own. The WorkSharp Pocket Knife Sharpener. A compact, lightweight, go-anywhere sharpener for every knife you own. Sharpen anywhere, anytime. Sharpen with a diamond plate and hone with a ceramic rod. Angle guides make it easy to get it sharp the first time and every time. Everything you need is built right in. Now there's no excuse for a dull knife. The Work Sharp Pocket Knife Sharpener, guaranteed to get the job done. Wherever you are. Get yours today. Visit WorkSharpTools.com. Hey, I'm Max Joseph. Previously, we talked about tier one rural survival kits, meaning it's actually on our body. Now I'm going to do tier two. It's a little bit larger carrier, and for this one, I'm using the Maxpedition Proteus VersaPack. This has enough equipment in here where I could last for several days out in the field if I had to jettison my rucksack, which is our tier three gear. So just going over this briefly, and this is by no means complete, but this is the, the basics that you would want in your tier two equipment. On my external pockets right here, I have my flashlight, which is dummy corded in. I also had a flashlight on my body we talked about previously. This is my secondary one. I've got my multi-purpose tool, which I deal would be dummy corded in as well. In my other pocket, I have a compass, which is also a secondary compass because I have a primary on my body with my tier one. 
When employing your compass, always keep in mind that your index finger should be oriented straight ahead to keep that compass pointed straight in front of you. Also, keep in mind that uh, that needle will be drawn towards any heavy metal object. So if you're wearing a rifle, or if you've got a lot of magazines on your kit, keep it further away from your body. Also, be aware of power lines and large deposits of metal um, and or metal buildings, etc. On this military lens added compass, I have both the forward sight and rear sight. By looking to my rear sight, lining with my desired point, I would then rotate my bezel ring to line up with my north seeking arrow. And I would keep those two aligned, I would then walk to my desired point. External pouch out here. I've got a broken down MRE. And when I refer to broken down, we remove this chow from the main plastic envelope because it's far too bulky. We also jettison those cardboard boxes that these individual meals come in and we just stick the individual envelopes inside here. Inside the main pouch, the basics here, I've got my cat tourniquet, I've got my Israeli dressing that go obviously right on top where they're easily accessible. Lastly, I have my 15 foot sling rope with two locking carabiners in case I need to net and negotiate any rocks or do any kind of uh, descents. For descent out of helicopters down cliffs, I'm gonna employ a hasty ranger seat and that is tied as follows. I get a bite in the center of my rope. I bring the bite through my legs, bring my running ends through, up and around. Cinching it down, making sure it's nice and tight for both safety and comfort when you break. On my left side, I will then tie a square knot and I will half hitch each side of that square knot for extra safety. At that time, I would stow any excess in my pocket, taking my carabiner, bringing it down and through both my ropes and rotating around so my gate is up and away. I'm now ready to hook on my main line and repel with my right arm as I come out of that bird. So if I have to drop my main rucksack because of escape and evasion reasons, or possibly I'm getting in trouble in, in the water where I need to get rid of that thing, my secondary care, like my Macpedition Proteus VersaPak here, is great because it stays on my body, but I'm not fully encumbered with the rucksack. I'm still able to run, and I'm still able to sustain myself in the field for several days if necessary. Stand by for the next one. Hey, this is Seth, and I'm going to show you how to get clean water in the backcountry or anywhere in the world with a Sawyer Squeeze filter. Whether hiking, camping, hunting, or fishing, or traveling abroad, this filter is perfect for all your adventures. With a total field weight of only three ounces, this is the lightest and most packable filter available. First, select the pouch of your choice, and then fill it with water that you want to filter. Next, screw the filter onto the pouch and wipe off any excess water so it doesn't get into your bottle. Then you're ready to filter. The squeeze filter can be used many different ways. You can drink directly from the filter, you can fill up your bottle, and fill up your friend's bottles if you're nice. You can get clean water for cooking instantly. If water is scarce, fill up extra pouches as reserves. Don't trust the tap water or bottled water when traveling abroad. Just screw the filter directly onto your bottled water. The squeeze filter fills up most bottles in under 20 seconds. Because the filter has such a large surface area, it's pretty rare that you'll ever have to backwash it in the field. But if you do, here's how to do it. Unscrew the push-pull cap from the filter. Fill the included syringe with filtered water. Then, backwash the filter with the syringe. Sawyer's hollow fiber membranes are so robust that you can backwash your filter with high pressures and don't have to worry about damaging it. As long as you're properly cleaning your filter, you may never have to replace it. This is the Truss by Gerber. With the Truss, we took everything that users loved about the suspension and optimized the tool pack to deliver even more functionality. With 17 tools, you'll be able to handle any challenge that comes your way. This butterfly open multi-tool features spring-loaded pliers, 
tools include needle nose pliers, standard coarse pliers, and wire cutters. Bottle opener, can opener, small flathead driver, saw, serrated blade, wire stripper, large flathead driver, fine edge blade, cross driver, scissors, all, ruler, file, medium flathead driver. Locking outboard tools offer quick access and safe use. The truss comes in a nylon sheath, available in either dual mount or molly compatible options. From the job site to the campsite, the truss delivers professional grade tools in a compact frame. I'm Max Joseph. Right now, we're going to talk about my tier three equipment if I'm out in the field. We already discussed tier one earlier, that was what is on my body. Tier two is in my butt pack or my secondary equipment. Right now, for my tier three, I'm using, for example, here a Maxpedition Falcon 2 rucksack. Everything that we're going to be going over here is, is the basics. What you're going to have in here is going to be totally mission dependent and how long you'll be out in the field. On the outside of this thing, I've got my poncho. In addition to using it in the conventional sense for protecting yourself from rain, it could also be used for shelter construction. It could be used for making a field expedient litter for cows in evacuation. And it could even be used for water crossing if you construct a poncho raft with it. So with all the uses your poncho has, I strongly recommend you carry one of these, even if you're just going on a short trip, because it may turn into a longer one than you expected. So that's my poncho on the outside right there. On my first external pouch, I've got my water purification gear, I've got my bug juice, and I've got my foot powder, and I've got several pairs of spare socks on the inside of here. My upper pouch right here, be a secondary pair of binos, dummy corded in. Inside my main pouch, or my secondary pouch now, I've got spare water bottles. I've got MREs, they're broken down. Inside my main compartment now is how I sustain myself or how I sleep at night. I've got my poncho liner. I discussed the poncho earlier. One of my best friends told me that the two best things that come out of the Vietnam War was a P-38 can opener and a poncho liner, and he definitely was not wrong. So this goes with the poncho uh, for your sleeping gear. Also in the main compartment, I've got my rain jacket. I've got small toiletry items, and also I've got more MREs in here. So this is just the basics of what you would want in your tier three equipment for a short-term mission. Everything is gonna be mission-based on the duration and the environment that you're working in. Hey, so just once again, covering the concept of these three different tiers of sustainment or survival equipment, in case you have to escape and evade or get in trouble when you're in the water, the first thing to go would be your tier three equipment. That would still leave you with your tier two. If for some reason you had a jettison that, you've got your tier one, which is on your actual body in your pocket. So thanks for watching this Maxpedition sponsored uh, tier one, two, and three survival tips. Hopefully you learned something. Any further questions you may have, contact dag-usa.com or maxpedition.com, and we'll definitely see you in the field. Ciao.
after 10 years of incredible performance and dependability, let me introduce the new M2.0. Hi, I'm Julie Golub, the captain of Team Smith & Wesson. As a former soldier, MP, and now as a professional competition shooter, I'm very excited about this next generation of the M&P pistol. A decade of feedback from military, law enforcement, competition, testing, and you, the everyday user, has gone into the making of this pistol. There's a lot you'll recognize and appreciate from the original. First, let's start with the trigger guard. We've kept the geometry the same so that you'll have compatibility with many M&P holsters. We've also kept the sight dovetail cuts the same so you can use your favorite sights. Original magazines are interchangeable and compatible with both newer and older models. And of course, the ergonomic design and reliability you've come to expect from the M&P is in this model as well. The new M2.0 has evolved. We've added front slide serrations and an aggressive grip texture throughout the entire grip. We've also added a longer internal slide guide rail to allow better performance by both the 2.0 and you. An ambidextrous slide stop plus the ambi mag release button makes it easy for both right-handed and left-handed shooters to access critical controls. On the original MMP, we set the standard with interchangeable back straps. We've added a fourth, allowing for 90% of shooter hand sizes to be accommodated by this new grip. You'll have your choice between small, medium, medium-large, and large so that you can get that perfect feel and trigger reach so you can shoot your best. The 2.0 also features a newly designed trigger. It's crisp, lighter, and tighter with that highly desired audible and firm reset. It also features an internal sear deactivation lever, which allows you to take the gun apart without pulling the trigger. Available in a variety of models, the M2.0 comes in 9 and 40, 4 and a quarter or 5 inch models, black or flat dark earth, with or without a thumb safety. Experience the next evolution of the M&P, the M2.0. Learn more at smith-wesson.com.